Here's a list of over 25 free tools and services you can use to finish your projects faster. We are covering UI design, databases, auth, payments, email, and more. I have actually used all of these in my own projects and because of that, in some categories, I will give you a few options and tell you which one I would pick. But in other categories, there's just one option because that's my top pick. Most people start their project by building the UI, so that's where we will start as well. In the UI category, the winner is ShadCN. ShadCN is a library of beautiful React components built with Tailwind CSS. What makes ShadCN different from other UI libraries is that you don't install ShadCN in your project and import its components. With ShadCN, you go to the website, pick the component you want to use, and copy the code into your project. There is also a command line tool that makes this copy-pasting process even faster. After you're done with the UI, you can add some animations to your project with Magic UI, 21st Dev, and Externity. They are all collections of animated components that you can also copy-paste in your project and that make landing pages look very, very modern and professional. They integrate very well with ShadCM because they use the same command line tool to install the components. While building the UI, you will also need icons. I have bounced between many packages over the years, but I have mostly settled between two, Lucid and Icones. Lucid has a ton of icons. It is very easy to use and customize. It also has its own React package called Lucid React that gives you type safety and auto imports. 85% of the time, you will find the icon you need in Lucid. But if you don't, you can use Icones. Iconis is seriously underrated. It is a directory of icon packs. It not only has the popular icon packs like Font Awesome and Design and so on, but it also has packs of animated icons, emojis, flags, brand logos, etc. What makes Iconis so cool is that it gives you all these different options to install the icon. You can copy the SVG, the PNG, the React component, the TypeScript version, etc. Okay, enough with the UI. Let's move on to the backend. You need a place to deploy your code, and for that, you have a few options. For me, as a rule of thumb, to deploy a project that is on any language other than TypeScript, I will use AWS. AWS has a free tier that gives you a T3 microserver for 12 months if you are a new user. That is perfect to start with. And here I want to make a point. Even a small server will be plenty fast for most projects if the code isn't poo. If you have zero users and are wondering what happens if I get a million users and my server crashes, you are worrying about the wrong thing. I have projects with hundreds of thousands of users and they run just fine on $40 servers. And anyways, if you have a ton of users, chances are your database will tap out before your server does. Now, if I am working on a TypeScript project and I'm using a full stack framework like Next.js or Remix or a backend framework like Hono, I will deploy to Cloudflare workers. Nothing can beat Cloudflare's pricing. You get 100,000 free requests per day and unlimited static asset bundles. With. And if you upgrade to the paid plan for $5 a month, you get the 10 million requests per month and a whole more stuff. You could also use Vercel, especially if you are using Next.js, since no other platform has better integration with Next.js than Vercel. But I have never been a fan of their pricing. It can get expensive real fast. Okay, now that we have a place to deploy our code, let's move on to the database. Database-wise, whenever I build a project, I either use SQLite or PostgreSQL. I made a video about how powerful and on underrated SQLite is a while ago, so I won't get into it here, but I'll just say it is a great option for most projects. If you choose to go with SQLite and you are not using Cloudflare workers, I would recommend you use Turso. Turso gives you 500 SQLite databases and 5 GB of storage for free, but keep in mind that they are a startup and they aren't as mature. They even had a data loss incident a while ago. If you are using Cloudflare workers, you can use Cloudflare D1, which is their serverless database that is built on top of SQLite and that you can use with a workers free plan. If you decide that you need to use PostgreSQL, I recommend you save your time trying to find another serverless and database provider that isn't incredibly slow and just use AWS RDS. For new accounts, AWS gives you a free T3 micro database for 12 months with 20 gigabytes of SSD storage, which is again perfect to start with. 
And if you are using Cloudster Workers, you can make your RDS database even faster using Hyperdrive. With Hyperdrive, you basically put Cloudster in front of your database. So Cloudster will cache your queries and using their global network, turn your single region database into a multi-region one. Okay, we have a UI, backend and database. Now it is time to add authentication. If you want to, you can implement authentication yourself. Or if you value your time, you can use Cleric. Cleric is a user management platform that you can use to add authentication to your project in a shockingly short amount of time. It comes with a bunch of pre-made components like sign-in and sign-up forms that you can customize to your liking. Like here, where I am customizing my sign-up box, choosing what methods of authentication I want to use, like email and password, username, phone number, and a bunch of social login providers. After you're done with the customization, it is this easy to show the sign-up form in your app. Apart from the sign-in and sign-up forms, Clerk has other components that save you a ton of time. You can use the user button component in your navigation bar that on click opens a drop down menu with options to manage account settings and sign out. And there is even a user profile component that renders a profile page where the user can change their profile picture, name, email, phone number, password, and so on. Apart from the pre made components, Clerk also has a bunch of APIs and React hooks you can use elsewhere in your app. In an API route, for example, you can use the current user function to get the user profile and perform authentication checks. Or in a normal component, you can use the use user hook to create protected routes. Clerk also has a bunch of security features that are a pain to implement on your own but incredibly important, like brute force protection, bot protection, account linking, disposable email address detection, and more. Your users can even create organizations and invite other users to join them with roles and permissions missions. Among others, Clerk has SDKs for Next.js, Chrome extensions, Expo, iOS, JavaScript, Noxt, React to Router, Tan Stack, Vue, C Sharp, Express, Go, Python, Ruby on Rails, and more. Everything I mentioned comes included on Clerk's free plan, where you can have up to 10,000 monthly active users before paying a dime. After that, it is two cents per active user per month. The monthly active users metric is very important. If someone creates an account in your app and they never come back, they don't count towards your monthly active users. You don't pay for them. If someone logs in June for a couple of times, they will be counted as an active user in June. But if they don't log in at all in July, you don't pay for that user in July. And again, you only start paying after you have 10,000 monthly active users, which is a lot of users. Most projects wouldn't even get to that point. And if you do build something that can get more than 10,000 monthly active users, you will be laughing your way to the bank. Now that you have users, chances are you will want to let them upload files. The industry standard for file storage is AWS S3. For new accounts, AWS gives you 5 gigabytes of free storage, 20,000 get requests per month, and 2,000 put requests or uploads per month. What you have to be careful about are the egress fees, which are the fees you pay for the data that is sent out of AWS, like when a user requests a file. Egress fees is where you will get beaten if you aren't careful. Sure, Amazon won't charge you for the first 100 gigabytes of egress data, but after that it is 9 cents per gigabyte which will add really fast if you don't limit file sizes, don't have a CDN in place, and don't have any sort of rate limiting on upload and download endpoints. Because of egress fees, many developers moved to Cluster R2, which is a fully S3 compatible object storage that has no egress fees whatsoever. The free R2 pricing is 10 gigabytes of storage, a million delete, update, create operations, and 10 million read operations per month. Now that you have users and files, it is time to add a payment system so that you can charge your users. For payment processing, Stripe is the industry standard as long as you are in one of the 46 countries that Stripe supports. If you aren't, what you can do is use a merchant of record service like Lemon Squeezy or Paddle. Merchant of record means that those companies will handle the payments for you, as well as the tax collection, compliance, refunds, and chargebacks. When using a merchant of record, your users will pay through your website, but the money will be sent to the merchant of record, which then will send it to you. Stripe charges around 1.5 to 3% plus 25 cents per transaction and Paddle and Lemon Squeezy charge 5% plus 50 cents. 
So they're a bit more expensive, but you are getting more things done for you. And you don't even have to have a company. You can get paid as an individual. If you implement subscriptions in your app, you can use Clerk Billing, which is a product that comes with components like pricing tables so that you can add subscription management to your application in a couple of minutes. Okay, now that you are almost done, it is time to buy a domain name so your users can find your website. With the domain names, they aren't any free options, but there are some cheap ones. I personally use Namecheap because they are very cheap. Cheap. Their domain search tool is pretty good and they run sales all the time. They have a bunch of very cool and cheap extensions like that .xyz, that .online, that .website that you can buy for peanuts sometimes. After you have a domain name, you will want to add a way to send emails to your users. Emails like welcome email, password reset email, account verification emails, etc. These are called transactional emails. I used to use Mailgun for a really, really long time, but I have recently switched to Resend and I love it. Mailgun feels like it stopped improving a while ago and Resend is compatible with a absolutely awesome package called React Email. React Email is a collection of unstyled components for creating emails using React, TypeScript, and Tailwind CSS. If you ever had to create email templates in the past, you know how much of a pain it is to get the HTML and CSS right. And to make sure that not only the email looks good, but that it is also compatible with and responsive in all email clients. With React Email, you can create emails using React components, and React Email will compile them to the HTML and CSS from 1998 that all email clients need. React Email does work with other email providers, but it has first-class support in Recent, since they are the ones that create it. Both Mailgun and Recent have a free tier, so you can go wrong with either of them, but the developer experience is better with Recent. Okay, so your app is live and you're sending emails. Now, what happens if something goes wrong? To know about the runtime errors in the app, I use Sentry, the most famous error tracking tool out there. Sentry works in tons of different languages and frameworks, and installing it is very easy. You just copy paste a bit of code here and there in your project, and when there is an error, you will get an email with an alert, and you will be able to inspect the error on the Sentry dashboard that will tell you what went wrong, to who, when, and where. With the free plan, you can track up to 5,000 errors per month, which is a number I hope you never reach. As I said before, when your app starts to grow, the thing that will most likely tap out first is your database. So when you have identified that your database is the bottleneck and you know which queries are the slowest, you can introduce caching to your app. For caching, you could use Cloudflare KB or the king of caching, Redis. A Redis provider that I like is Upstash. They have a free plan with 256 megabytes of caching storage and 500,000 operations per month. Now that your project is almost complete, you can add some bells and whistles to it. If your app has a search feature and you want to provide near real-time search results like this one, where as you can see, the results are updated as you type, you can use Algolia, which is a service specialized in search experiences and recommendations. They have a free plan with up to 10,000 searches per month and 1 million records. Another bell and whistle you can add to your app is notifications and you can use one signal for that using one signal you can send push notifications emails sms and web push notifications all using one api which is very convenient and that's it for this video i hope you found it useful and i hope that you can use some of these tools to finish your projects faster check out clerk by clicking the link below so you can save time on implementing the boring user authentication and you can focus on building the awesome parts of your project thank you for watching see you on the next one bye bye